patient hearing and I'm very First of all, I'd like to thank the chairpersons, also Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, Dr. Anjali and the team for this wonderful meeting organized uh, at such a wonderful location. May we have the slides? Yeah. So I'm going to just talk about new onset diabetes in the post-COVID era. And uh, lots of what I have to say has already been uh, alluded to by Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar. Nevertheless, there may be some points of uh, new points which I might mention. So let me begin with a case. Uh, this is a 27-year-old lady who just came to see me recently. She had uh, COVID and diabetes ketoacidosis together in 2021, and her GAD antibodies were positive. So the doctor wasn't sure that whether it is type 2 or type 1, and the doctor put her on twice daily a mixture of IDEG ASP, which is Degludec and Aspart and Metformin, when she came to meet me. And she has been taking that for nearly one year or so when she came to meet me, and she was referred by the doctor. And her fasting was 195, and the post-prandial was also high, and the HP1C was 8.4%. So this is a typical case of diabetes having its onset during COVID, but this was unusual because it was like a type 1 diabetes, and the patient also had diabetic ketoacidosis. So there is a lot of theory as to how the COVID virus and the similar viruses affect the pancreas because the pancreas itself expresses ACE2 receptors. And these ACE2 receptors preferentially uh, attack the endocrine cells because these ACE2 receptors are expressed more in the endocrine tissue than in the exocrine tissue. And the, the virus binds to the ACE2 receptor on the beta cells, you get diabetes. So this is a study and this is done before COVID. It looks at the uh, SARS-CoV receptor protein, and this paper was published uh, in 2010. So here in section A, you will have, uh, you can see the pancreas, you can see the islet, and in section B, you will see the general staining, but here you will see the preferential strain, staining on the endocrine cells and on the beta cells in particular in the pancreas, showing you that the virus binds to the uh, ACE2 receptors which are preferentially expressed in the beta cell. And like it was mentioned by Dr. Mangesh, during the pandemic and especially during the lockdown, there was an increase in high carb food, there was an increase in sedentary activity, there was a lot of stress because people were following the numbers which were going up and down in different parts of the country and the world and therefore this itself could have triggered diabetes. Now what happens is any COVID or any infection or any inflammation for that matter uh, causes the release of cytokines, IL-1, IL-6 and TNF-alpha, which will block insulin production as well as cause insulin resistance. In addition, the same inflammation can also, sorry, the same inflammation can also cause glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis and reduced glucose uptake in the skeletal muscles and all these can trigger uh, hyperglycemia. So as you can see, uh, hyperglycemia glycosylates uh, the ACE2 receptors, makes them probably more active and the SARS-CoV-2 virus can bind to it and that causes beta cell dysfunction. In addition to that, all the cytokines also produce insulin resistance and sometimes when there's insulin resistance, uh, the beta cell uh, starts releasing antigens, including insulin, and that drives an autoimmune disease. And in addition, uh, people have hypothesized that this hyperglycemia-induced glycosylated ACE2 may trigger an immune response, which leads to beta cell dysfunction. As Dr. Tivaskar mentioned, the ACE2 is down-regulated, and that causes angiotensin II to rise. And angiotensin II binds to the AT1 receptor, it reduces insulin signaling and causes oxidative stress. And that in turn precipitates both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So COVID can trigger, it may not be the cause of diabetes. I don't think that there's enough evidence to say that COVID is causing diabetes. It may trigger a tendency to type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes in people 
uniquely predisposed. But there might be a subset of people who actually get post-COVID diabetes. Difficult to make out because people during COVID have stress, inflammation, cytokines, steroid therapy, hospitalization, and that might itself might cause hyperglycemia. Now, in this paper, which was published in 2022, fairly recently, uh, they looked at the incidence of newly diagnosed diabetes after COVID. And the aim of this work was to investigate diabetes incidence after infection with COVID-19 and people with upper respiratory tract infections, which are frequently caused by the viruses, was looked at as a control group. So in the control group, they took people with upper respiratory infections, not COVID, and in the, treat, in the, in the case group, they took COVID patients, and they found that people who had COVID, when compared to people with a simple URI, had a 28% higher risk of diabetes, and, and uh, that was compared to normals, and compared to the upper respiratory tract infection, it was about 14%. So therefore, people with an upper respiratory tract infection versus COVID, COVID people had almost a 14% increase in uh, new onset diabetes. And when you look at healthy individuals who never had an upper respiratory infection, the chance of getting COVID was even higher. It was about 28%. And this is, uh, they excluded, very interestingly, very importantly, they excluded patients who were in the ICU who received steroids because that itself can cause hyperglycemia. So they excluded that group and then they saw, and in the blue color, you will see the COVID uh, patients and in the red color, you will see the upper respiratory tract infection patients. And very clearly, people with COVID have about 12 to 16 percent. Let's take a ballpark figure of 14 percent higher chance of developing incident diabetes. And this is the incident rate per lakh of diabetic ketoacidosis diagnosed between January 2019 to September 2021. So uh, the pink color shows people who don't have COVID and the blue color shows people who had COVID. And this is seen in a na nationwide cohort from the US and you will see this with each month uh, August, September, October, November, December, you'll see that the red line is actually coming down and the blue line is going up. In other words, diabetic ketoacidosis, which was there, started coming down in, and, and the COVID-related DK, uh, the COVID-related DK going up. Now, is this really COVID-related DK? I don't think so, because as you can see, any diabetic ketoacidosis occurring in the COVID pandemic got classified as COVID induced. And I also had many patients who had type one diabetes after COVID. And in, in fact, I remember one was also a doctor's son and they all thought that this is post COVID diabetes, it won't go away, but actually it's just type one diabetes, it got, just got triggered or it's just simultaneously by coincidence, both came together. So this is another paper which shows that COVID increases the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis. And you can see that the authors uh, look at, looked at all the articles and they compiled the information. And like I mentioned, uh, SARS-CoV-2 will downregulate the ACE2, increase the angiotensin 2, that drives oxidative stress. The immune status is altered and that predisposes people to autoimmunity. Uh, there is a cytokine storm which causes insulin resistance. Pancreatic cell damage causes hyperglycemia. And the management is really nothing but classic management of diabetic ketoacidosis. Just because somebody has got COVID, you're not going to manage in some other way. You're going to give insulin infusion. You're going to treat as DK. And of course, you need to look at long COVID and look at new onset diabetes. This is again the probability of uh, DK going up. And therefore, if you look at people with diabetes and uncontrolled hyperglycemia, both prolonged hospitalization, assisted respiration, comorbidities, nutritional depletion, prolonged recovery, all these can predispose people to long COVID as well as post-COVID and diabetes. And factors which contribute to post-COVID syndrome or long COVID are worsening of hyperglycemia, sarcopenia, which means lot loss of muscle mass, poor nutrition, electrolyte disorders, uh, worsening of the comorbid diseases which pre-existed, infections, psychological stress, diabetic neuropathy, autonomic dysfunction, and the use of uh, corticosteroids. 
And what is the solution? The solution is just common sense, good glucose control, blood pressure control, uh, nutrition deficiency correction, counseling, rehabilitation, physiotherapy, exercises, treating infections early and early stopping of corticosteroids. Uh, this is another paper which was published recently which looks at the burden of incident diabetes in long COVID. And if you look at the, if you look at the control group, people who had 30 day survivors of COVID uh, exhibited an increased hazard ratio uh, of about 1.4, uh, as you can see, uh, and an excess burden uh, per thousand people of incident diabetes and increased risk of use of antihyperglycemic agents as well as the composite outcome. So if you look at people, the outcomes were ascertained from day 30 after COVID-19 and from that day to the end of the follow-up and they looked at adjusted hazard ratio and, and they looked at event rates per thousand people at 12 months for the COVID group as well as the control group. So at the 30th day post-COVID to one year, they looked at these people and they found that people who had COVID had a higher chance of diabetes, a high, a high chance of antihyperglycemic drug, drug use as well as composite outcomes. So newly diagnosed diabetes versus pre-existing diabetes on admission for COVID-19. What are the chances? One important thing is that people with newly diagnosed diabetes uh, at COVID, they had a different profile, a slightly different profile. In fact, after, so this is a paper which came out suggesting that post-COVID diabetes is mild. And, but this is half of these people with COVID-19 and newly diagnosed diabetes regressed to normal glycemia or pre-diabetes. But these were probably stress hyperglycemia because of stress of infection, inflammation, uh, uh, steroid therapy, hospitalization. So stress hyperglycemia may be this, the reason for this. And really, it's very unlikely that they had just had a temporary beta cell damage because of ACE2 receptor binding and that went away after some time. Another interesting thing is that people who are diagnosed with diabetes at COVID presentation, their blood sugar levels were not that high, but their inflammatory markers in ICU admission was higher. Again, that suggests that stress hyperglycemia could be the major uh, uh, pathophysiological mechanism and half regress. In other words, COVID and diabetes, in my view at least, exist, exist quite simultaneously. I've look, closely looked at most of the COVID patients who say they have got post-COVID diabetes. I found that even before COVID, they seem to have a high or borderline high HbA1c. The second thing is those who regress don't really have diabetes which is triggered, but probably they have stress-induced hyperglycemia which has got better. And the other group which really had diabetes type 1 or type 2 and COVID nearly gave the final, uh, no, the final issue that broke the camel's back sort of situation. So coming back to this lady, she was on a co-formulation of insulin and of a degludec insulin and aspart insulin twice a day and metformin with high sugars. So she has got a typical type 1 diabetes. Maybe she had type 1 diabetes before and COVID actually triggered that and she got DK because of inflammation. So I stopped the idegasp and I started her on degludec and fiasp and, and on that I started also on continuous glucose monitoring and you can see she's got a good time in range. A time in range of 70 to 180 uh, of about 70% is okay. Her time in range was about 82%. But you can see she's a lot of hypoglycemia, 7%. So uh, the dose continues to be adjusted. So how did I treat her? I just treated her like any other type 1 diabetes with GAD positivity and DK. Just because she had COVID, that made no difference to my treatment. I really question the concept of a pure COVID-related diabetes. So why does all this happen? Why does hyperglycemia happen? It may happen because of inflammation, because of baseline autoimmunity with which patients with COVID get pushed into diabetes, insulin resistance, and yes, ACE2 overexpression in the beta cells of the endocrine section of the pancreas and the glycosylation of ACE2 might trigger people to get diabetes when they get COVID. How common is it compared to people who never had COVID, who never had COVID, never had URI, it's about 28% higher. Compared to people who had a URI, it's about 14% higher compared to an ordinary URI. And what to do? Don't look at a specific type of COVID-related diabetes or long COVID-related diabetes.
treat the diabetes based on the clinical finding that you see, whether it's type 1 or type 2, and treat according to guidelines. If the patient is in hospital, you'll have to give insulin. If it's type 1 diabetes, you'll have to give insulin. If it's type 2 diabetes, you'll have to manage with diet exercise. And if the diabetes gets better, we won't, I never think that it's because of COVID-related diabetes which got better, because if you see that study, it's clearly stress-related hyperglycemia which got better. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, pleasure talking to you. And thank you so much for listening to me.